Hi, I'm Sean, KX9X. I'm Ward, in 0 ax If you're interested in checking out the amateur radio satellites, DX Engineering has a couple of pieces of gear that make it really easy to get started. The M-squared egg beater series of omnidirectional antennas and the ICOM ID5100 dual band full duplex FM transceiver. We're going to show you how to get these antennas installed and hook them up to the 5100 and help you get on the birds in no time flat. There are two antennas here. This is the two meter egg beater. It's a pair of loops that are fed 90 degrees out of phase. This is the assembly that has the ballon and the phasing lines. Connect the feed line down here. It's a UHF connector right here. We have a ground plane. What this results in is roughly a hemispherical uh, pattern, omnidirectional. So if this thing moves around a little bit, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is the two meter uh, egg beater assembly. Got the four foot feed line attached right here, and I'll be hooking that up to our combiner box in a minute. On the other side, we've got the 70 centimeter uh, egg beater. Works just the same, it's a pair of loops, quarter wave out of phase. This is the ballon and the phasing line. This has end connectors on it, so I've got a four foot piece of uh, coax with end connectors on each end. Okay, this is a little bit asymmetrical because this is attached here at the support pipe at the mechanical balance point, so it's not trying to tip one way or the other. Okay, now it's time to hook up the antennas to the combiner box here. The combiner box is just a uh, Rubbermaid uh, plastic cabinet. What I have inside, come on down here, I went over to the store and I got myself a $1 piece of uh, bamboo marketed cleverly as a cutting board. That's screwed onto the back. That gives me something mechanical to attach the pieces to. What are the pieces? This piece is what's called a masthead preamplifier. Um, it's uh, made to be mounted at the antennas, not in the shack. It gives you the best performance of the preamp because it amplifies the signal with only the small amount of feed line. And so you don't get the whole loss of the feed line down to the station before you uh, do your amplification, your pre-amplification. So this thing has to handle, I only have the one feed line, so it has to handle the transmitted power as well. So it has automatic sensing and switching inside. So what I have is a 50 foot piece of LMR 400 this has end connectors on each end. So this is a Mirage uh, 70 centimeter masthead RF switched preamplifier. Okay, so here's the, uh, the feed line. It's firmly attached. Okay, next thing in the combiner box is a diplexer. And it has, it takes input from the feed line and it has a two meter port and it has a 70 centimeter port. This is 400 to uh, 460 megahertz. This is uh, HF to two meters. The feed line goes into the RF switch uh, preamplifier and what comes out of the feed line will go into the diplexer. This cable, which has in connectors on it, will go to our 70 centimeter egg beater. This cable, which has UHF connectors on it will go to the two meter egg beater. Here we go. And I'm using uh, just an adapter, a coax adapter, instead of another cable because that's the most compact and easy to deal with arrangement. And once I get all this assembled and we get it all tested and everything works, I'll come back and waterproof and tighten everything down. So here comes the 70 centimeter cable. I drilled a couple of holes in the box. Once you get these things installed, you want to tighten them for, for reels with a pair of pliers because they'll loosen if they're only finger tight. And the thermal cycling from being out here in the weather will cause them to loosen up. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to stick this back here. 
for right now. Here comes the uh, UHF connector. It, you can use a bulkhead or a PL258. Use high quality uh, adapters whenever you can. A bad adapter can cost you a lot of signal. So here we go. Just kind of all stuffed in the box for now. We'll test it out uh, downstairs in the station and we're good to go. Once you're done, goes on here. I would tape it uh, for the long run, but for right now, that's your uh, antenna system. It's all ready to go. And I'm going to mount it in a vent pipe from the plumbing. Uh, this is not a heavy assembly. It's less than 10 pounds. And so this is pretty easy. I had a two inch vent pipe and I have a one and a half inch support pipe. They fit right inside each other. You use a U-bolt to hold the weight of the assembly. And so if the wind blows a little bit, it'll turn back around and it will not put any stress on the vent pipe. So this is an easy way to put stuff on your roof, J-poles, ground planes, whatever. This is about the biggest thing I'd put on a vent pipe. The ICOM ID5100 is a full duplex FM transceiver for the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. With two independent VFOs, independent volume and squelch control, touch screen ease of operation, 1000 memory channels, and easy crossband operation, the 5100 is a great radio for getting started in FM satellite operation. The 5100 has two VFOs. One is designated as main and the other is designated as sub. You can transmit on the main VFO while monitoring the sub VFO, providing full duplex capability, a critical feature for maximum success when operating satellites. Most FM satellites require you to transmit a 67 Hz CTCSS tone to access the satellite. Programming the ICOM 5100 to do this is easy. Press the Function menu button in the lower left of the display until it reads F3. Then press the Tone button. On the Tone option that appears in the center of the display, press Tone to enable the main VFO with a CTCSS tone on transmit. To change the CTCSS tone value to 67 Hz, Press the menu button on the lower left of the case, then press the duplex tone option on the touch screen, then press repeater tone on the screen. Press the plus or minus button to change the value to 67 Hertz. You're now ready for satellite operation with the ICOM 5100. So, it's 1240 in the morning and the AO91 satellite is about to crest the horizon and pass at 81 degrees above elevation that's almost directly overhead so uh, we are going to give a shot at the AO91 satellite pass here it uh, transmits up to the satellite on 70 centimeters and the downlink uh, is on 2 meters on 145.960 megahertz uh, we're going to be listening to the downlink frequency as we are transmitting up on the uplink frequency because of the Doppler effect and because the uh, uplink frequency is on 70 centimeters, we are going to have to adjust our transmit frequency as the satellite passes overhead. We're starting at 435.240 on our uplink or, or transmit frequency and by the end of the pass we will be at 435.260 or 265 megahertz. And again, that's all because of the Doppler effect as the satellite is uh, moving across the sky overhead, uh, the frequency that we transmit on is going to have to shift as a result of that. We're starting to hear the satellite as it crests over the horizon a little bit. We're hearing some it shifts in the static a little bit.
I haven't transmitted yet because I'm waiting until I have better copy on the satellite before I transmit. Don't transmit into the satellite until you have solid copy on it. November 9, Zulu Tango from Kilo X-Ray 9, X-Ray, Echo Mike 4, 8. UXT, Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray, Echo, Echo uh, Mike 4 a Thank you, Kel. So you can hear, we heard our own signal through the downlink. That is why we do full duplex satellite passes, because we want to be able to hear our own signal through the downlink and make sure that we are getting into the satellite as opposed to somebody else. That's why we do full duplex. Just changed our operate our transmit frequency again to compensate for Doppler. like we are now out of the satellite's footprint, meaning that uh, the satellite has gone below the horizon at LOS, or loss of signal. So once the satellite goes below the horizon, then we can't use it anymore. So the pass is done. Okay, so that was a good example of why you want full duplex you so you can hear yourself uh, on the downlink as you are transmitting because as I started to transmit somebody with a louder signal made it into the satellite before me so I didn't make it in uh, and I heard that somebody else got in before me so I could stop transmitting because I was I didn't want to waste my my tr my time trying to transmit uh, when somebody else made it into the satellite first. Kaliaka Zero, Papa Bravo Radio from Kilo X Ray 9 X Ray, Echo Mike 4 8, Paul. Alright, thanks a lot, Paul. Kilo X Ray 9 X Ray, Echo Mike 4 8. Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray, Echo Mike 48, St. Louis, ready. N4, uh, N Nancy Delta Zero Charlie, Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray, Echo Mike 48, near St. Louis. Okay, so between those two passes, we worked about seven or eight stations. That's not too bad. The ICOM ID 5100 is a great starter radio to get on the FM satellites. Full duplex capability on both 2 meter and 70 centimeters, the critical bands that you need for the FM satellites. Having full duplex makes it possible for you to hear yourself 
through the satellite's downlink, which is critical when you're first getting started because you have it's good to know when you're actually making it into the satellite or when somebody else is talking on top of you. That's the importance of full duplex when you're working satellites. The M squared egg beater antennas work very well under these circumstances. Uh, they You don't have to worry about having an azimuth elevation rotator to track the satellite as it goes overhead. They're omnidirectional antennas, so they are in a fixed position. You don't have to worry about the extra rotator. There is a bit of a compromise with that though because the antennas are radiating omnidirectionally and you will not hear all of the passes, uh, especially the low angle passes. You may not hear those. But for getting started on the satellites, this is a very good combination uh, to get your feet wet. Go to dxengineering.com today and check out these two pieces of gear. The M squared egg beater series of antennas and the ICOM ID5100. A good combination to get you started on the FM satellites. 73.